Hi everybody, this is Francis McInerney with another one of my Future Creators program installments. Future Creators is a comprehensive system for managing at Zetabyte scale. Here we're going to learn about one of the biggest mistakes you can make in M&A. This is the death of Alcatel Lucent Nokia, killed by combining terminally slow ecosystems. I'm going to show you how you can understand the impact of slow ecosystems on deals and how you can see years and years in advance what is going to happen to your deal or to anyone else's. What you will learn today, how not to make a 16.6 .6 billion M&A mistake. Low ecosystem velocity companies are in no position to make acquisitions. Don't forget it. If you have a low ecosystem velocity, do not even think about doing a deal because merging low ecosystem velocity companies can never be a creative. Just never. It never happens. You'll see, because of these simple data sets that we use, how you can foresee M&A disasters 15 years before events. Alcatel and Lucent merged 15 years ago. It's been a disaster ever since. And you can see also, when you look at companies like Compaq and Dak and Hewlett Packard, the same basic plan, the same path. The importance of ecosystem velocity, data, and due diligence. Nobody does this. The investment bankers don't do it, and they don't stick around. So when the deal collapses, they're not accountable. You are. Oh, that's great. Use ecosystem velocity to de-risk your every move. And don't forget it. It's not combined market share that makes or breaks acquisitions its relative ecosystem velocities. And here we're going to examine this seriously. And you will see also the horrible costs of buying back up the information cost velocity curve. Now, we called this one. We called this one years ago. In December 2000, we advised that the F-grade Alcatel would try to buy the F-grade Lucent. You have two companies with F grades for cash velocity and ecosystem velocity. They're supposed to merge? I don't think so. In May 21st, 2001, the talk started and we predicted deal failure. In April 14, 2006, this is years later and the talks were still going on, we showed that Alcatel's slowing ecosystem could not sustain any M&A for years to come. On November 30th, 2006, Alcatel paid $13.4 billion for Lucent. On June 10th, 2010, I went to Paris and I sat down with CEO Ben Verwan and I warned him of the risks of his slow ecosystem velocity and told him this was not going to work. Well, February 22nd, 2013, he was fired. 16.6 .6 billion for Alcatel Lucent. Good luck with that, Nokia. Let's look at Alcatel's ecosystem as it was in the years going up to its acquisition of Lucent. The picture is not that pretty. At first blush, you see some numbers that look good, sort of. For instance, days of sales in accounts receivable appear to have dropped, but the numbers are horrible they've dropped from the unsustainable to the miserable. That's not any help to anyone. But here's the kicker. In 1998, Alcatel's ecosystem velocity was 2.6 worse than Cisco, and that's before the crash of 2000, 2001. But by the time the deal started to move through, it was 3.0. 0.04 times slower, in other words, worse. So you have a declining ecosystem. And what Alcatel did is force its suppliers to mask its operational deficiencies by banking its deals. Look at the payables line. That tells you everything. When you see a payables curve like this, ask very hard questions. Now, the first thing we noticed when we looked at the revenue and operating income over the period of the crash in 2000-2001, the dot-com fiasco, you could see that Alcatel's slow ecosystem velocity 
led to huge shock vulnerability and losses mounted immediately and fast. But look at sales. Oh my. Sales dropped to around a third of where they had been in the year 2000. Single-digit operating margins. Management squeaked a little money out of this. This company was imploding. The combination of these two charts are so bad. Honestly, this was breakup time, and they should have known better. Let's look at Lucent's ecosystem. And on the Alcatel scale, it looks pretty good. And the fact is that Gil D'Amelio, the CFO, did a lot of work in the years following the crash to try to tighten up both inventory days and receivable days. And he, he worked, I have to say, pretty hard at getting this done. Now, on the other hand, while this looks good on the Alcatel scale, it was two point worse times than Cisco in 1998. So they went into the crash in a weak position. But Cisco did so much better over the intervening years, up to 2006 when the deal went through, that it was still 2.1 times further ahead than Lucent. So Lucent gained nothing in this time period, no matter what Gill did. And again, you see the suffering. Huge ecosystem velocity, shock, vulnerability, massive losses mounted very quickly. And again, look at the sales. My, 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 my. This is a monster collapse in sales. Again, by the end of the period, Cisco was 2.7 times better than Lucent. Now, you take a couple of companies that are performing very badly and try to combine them. You're asking for trouble. I don't care how you look at it. This deal was getting down on its knees and saying, please kill us. Here you have um, Alcatel at the bottom going from appalling cash velocity to appalling cash velocity, frankly, and shrinking in size while it did it. Lucent, well, cash velocity improved and clearly uh, Gil D'Amelio's efforts uh, paid off. But look at the shrinking in size. These companies could not contain their customers. They couldn't manage their accounts. They imploded. Now, look at this when you compare it to Cisco. You've got, again, the shrinking and poor performance of Alcatel, the somewhat better but shrinking performance of Lucent. But look at Cisco. Not only is Cisco making more money, it's improved its cash velocity and it's significantly bigger now than the other two combined. How did they do this? What was it about Cisco that made the merger of Alcatel and Lucent so obviously bad? And frankly, management should have known these data. There's no excuse. This is all stuff from an annual report. This is not rocket science. Look here at Cisco's days of sales and inventory and receivables and payables. Cisco's worst year was the same as Alcatel Lucent's 16 years later after the merger. Alcatel Lucent was 2.9 times worse than Cisco at the time of the merger. The fact is, Cisco is a different animal and it was kicking butt. Look at these data. Lucent's velocity of cash index certainly improved. Alcatel's was, you know, I mean, it improved, but it was going nowhere. All the time, slow but steady, the John Chambers team at Cisco was moving the data, moving the data, improving operations consistently, constantly identifying cash weight states and eliminating them. At its best, Alcatel Lucent's management was woefully deficient. Lucent got the message, just wasn't fast enough. Okay, let's move to the deal today. Let's talk about Nokia and Nokia's ecosystem. This does not look good, folks. The last good year was pretty bad. But this is almost 60% slower as it goes into this deal. You can't make acquisitions looking like this. It won't happen. We know it won't happen. Let's look at the impact on share price. $44 right before the tech crash. 
but 40 roughly at the time that Alcatel and Lucent merged. Uh, today, seven. This is a formula for value implosion. Management was asleep at the wheel here. They just weren't looking at the numbers. They weren't focused on what they had to do to make their company work. Alcatel Lucent? Well, we can see in the years since the merger that in 2006, when the deal went down, it was 2.1 times worse than Nokia was in 2014. It is still 18% slower than Nokia. So in other words, Nokia is buying a company worse off than itself. And that, we know, breaks every sensible rule in M&A. You must never, ever do that. One of the reasons is because the combined company will always take on the characteristics of the slowest of the two going into the deal. You think you can break that rule? You think you can reverse it? Good luck. Have a nice day. Let's look at share price. Sure enough, right before the crash, Alcatel Lucent was trading at $61. It was trading at $29 at the time that we said that the deal couldn't possibly work when it wanted to merge with Lucent. $13 at the time of its merger. What a collapse. $4 today. So there you have it. Who was right? Were we right in 2000 when we said this wasn't going to work? Were we right in 2001 or 2006 when we still said it wasn't going to work? There you have it. And this is the reason these companies have been forced to sell themselves to anyone who's stupid enough to buy them, to be honest with you. Now, look at the R&D failure here. Operating income has never exceeded R&D. What kind of manager would allow that to happen? That's nuts. In 2005, they just covered their R&D. That was it. And since then, nothing at all. We call this the Edison Gap when centralized labs simply stop scaling. The centralized labs that Edison created a little more than a century ago, I do believe. Today's performance is just inexcusable. Nokia, the story is no better. Management collapsed nearly 10 years ago, and you can see the failure here written in these data, as you can see them in the cash velocity data as well. There's no recovery here. Nokia did not recover from its situation. So before you buy, remember this. Merging low-grade companies is the last refuge of underperforming management. Failure to track ecosystem velocity gives the wrong answers about you, your target, and your competition. The inability to convert cash into sales fast overwhelms all merger synergies. Do not forget that. Your cash Velocity data determines everything about your ability to merge with anything, even a church mouse. Whatever those synergies may be, it's cash velocity. Now, let's look at Cisco. Over all of the years, Cisco was 48% smaller than Alcatel, Lucent, and Nokia combined in 2000. Nokia equaled the size of Cisco by itself in 2015. Today, this whole thing is reversed. Cisco is 52% bigger than Alcatel, Lucent, and Nokia combined. Someone's not thinking here. Look at Cisco R&D. It scales. Fast ecosystem velocity drives an instant bounce back, and so it proved in coming back from the tech crash 2000-2001 for Cisco. Better and better. Cisco consistently covers its R&D by a nice, handsome multiple. This R&D scales. Competitors rejoice. The Nokia Alcatel deal is dead on arrival. And you heard it here first. And you've been hearing this for 15, 16 years already. So the key lessons for future creators. Get ahead of the information cost velocity curve when you're doing mergers. Ecosystem velocity is destiny. If your ecosystem velocity is slow, do not undertake top line initiatives. Forget big deals. Remember the deck to compact to Hewlett Packard to break up. Or big capex. Remember Amagasaki. It nearly killed Panasonic. $4 billion to put a 
factory into a place that it should never have been put without ever giving proper consideration to ecosystem velocity and the structuring of that plant. Don't be fooled by investment bankers. They don't know what questions to ask, they take their fees and run, and they aren't accountable when the deals fail. Manage ecosystem velocity first, do deals later. Now, I've been future creating since 1976. I've seen all of these things. I know exactly how they'll work. So benefit from the knowledge you're getting here. Structure your deals properly. Get ahead of the curve. Make what you do accretive. Make sure your shareholders, your employees, everyone in your ecosystem benefits from your decisions. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon.